yo, what's up everybody? This is your boy Isaac. And this is your boy Bryce. And we are Brothers on Tennis. Guess what y'all? We made it through the Labor Cup. Oh my goodness, what an insane weekend of tennis. Bryce, you gotta talk to me, brother. How did you enjoy that Labor Cup, man? I tell you what, the, the Labor Cup for me personally is my favorite tennis event of the year. I put it above the Grand Slams, Slam tournaments. I put it above um, the Master Series, the Tier 1s, the Year-End Championships, Davis Cup, Fed Cup, uh-huh. all that. Uh-huh. Whoever came up with the whole concept of how the Labor Cup is played out with the multiple, the different point structures every day and the rules and how it's selected, it is the most amazing tennis uh, event of the year, Absolutely. and I'm. Uh, <laughs> we got to be there next year. It's in we, Boston next yes, year, right? Co- preach. Now listen. It is in the states. It's up in Boston. Y'all better know, brothers on tennis is going to be in the house. Yeah. That this event is too ridiculous to not be a part of it. It's so good. Right? Absolutely. I I just I couldn't get enough of the matches this weekend. I mean, from day one, from the start of it, it was just good. Right. Good. It is the only event all year that I watch every single match that is played. Yes. And and I'll tell you what, and this is the third year in a row yeah. where when you look at the two teams on paper, mm-hmm. you know, and, and for our listeners, I guess we should back up for those of you. Know, what the hell is <laughs> a labor cup, right? 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 <laughs> so Roger Federer decided that he wanted to create an event that acknowledged the contributions of players that were prior to a lot of this whole media rush that we have mm-hmm, now. Mm-hmm. And one of the players that it players that is largely respected by all is Rod Laver. That is correct. He is the only player to have won the Grand Slam twice, yes. meaning all four majors in a calendar year, and he did it both as an amateur and as a professional. That's right. Uh, so the Laver Cup is basically... An, from a high level, mm-hmm. it is tennis's version of the Ryder Cup from golf. Right. And so it is Team Europe, mm-hmm. so players who all hail from the country of Europe, right. versus Team World, which is every place <laughs> else, right? <laughs> right, right. And every year we look at the lineups mm-hmm. and we say, wow, Team Europe is so stacked. Right. You know, you expect for Team Europe to just to just run this just thing dominate. all the way out, exactly. right? And, exactly. And, and just so that our listeners kind of understand what we're talking about. The Labor Cup, the way that the teams are built is the first three players are selected based upon ranking. Mm -hmm. Then the coaches are able to select the next three. Right. And then there is an alternate for each team. Mm -hmm. So Team Europe is coached by Bjorn Borg. Yep. And team uh, with Thomas Inquist as his uh, vice captain. That's right. And then we have Team World is the fiery John McEnroe, <laughs> Mac. who has his brother Patrick, Patrick as his vice captain. Patrick, you better be listening to this episode. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, when you look at Team Europe and just the name who was on Team Europe this year, you had Roger Federer, mm-hmm. Rafael Nadal, yep. Dominic Team, yep. Stefano Tsitsipas, yep. Alexander Zarev, Fabio Fagnini, <laughs> And then for the alternate, we had RBA, yeah. Roberto Batista Agut. Who's number 10 in the world. Right. So <laughs> their whole team Stacked. were players that were in the top 11. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Crazy. Now, on Team World, mm-hmm. you had John Isner, mm-hmm. Taylor Fritz, mm-hmm. Jack Sock, Milos Rionic, mm-hmm. uh, Nick Kyrgios. Uh, Dennis Shapovalov, mm-hmm. and then for the alternate you had um, who did they have for that the was Jack Sock? Or no, no, no Jack Sock alter- was the, the, the alternate was um, oh what's the Australian oh Jordan boy's Thompson Jordan Thompson sorry yeah. Jordan my you bad know, Jordan since you didn't play we didn't um, <laughs> sorry, keep Jordan. your name to memory <laughs> he did coaching though he was coaching Nick a lot yeah he that, was he that. was so he did he did his part so just as you heard me name those two teams, yeah. if you were to say who's going to win, you would naturally think Europe. Yep. Now, granted, Europe has won oh, yeah. the past well, three, three years. years, but 
It has not been a walkover no. by any stretch of the imagination. No, it has not. I mean, the those boys are balling out there. They, they are, are competing. Right. And and even though they may be underdog, it just goes to show one match is one match. And and if you bring it right on the right day, you can get them W's. And what else it shows is really what the depth of talent is on the tour. Absolutely. Because Team Europe, like we said, all their players were in the top 11. Mm-hmm. And the highest ranked player from Team World, who was John Isner, Mm -hmm. was number 20. Right. So that just shows if you're probably in the top 40, Mm -hmm. on any given day. Any given day, you can get that W. Right. And if you're Jack Sock and you're ranked 200 (laughs) and something, that day against Fab (laughs) Fonini might be the day. (laughs) He was like, Fabio, ain't nobody scared of you. He was like, your game does not impress me. This is Labor Cup. Bitch, I've been putting it down for the last two years. I'm about to put it down this third year. And you know what? To be very honest, and, yes. and, and Isaac, you know I Come love on Jack. Now. Jack, yes. Sock. Jack is, yes. Isaac is my witness. Whenever we go to tournaments and Jack is playing mm-hmm. on a particular court, I will go watch Jack. Absolutely. But Jack know he was out there looking like somebody's <laughs> uncle on that court, looking all swole and ready to sit down for a picnic, right? And so I didn't think Fonini was going to have any problem. He was just going to run him, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But to Jack's credit, man, yes. he really went out there and balled out. Like I said, Jack was like, bitch, nobody's scared of you. <laughs> He was like, I know I can play top 10 tennis because I've been in the top 10. Right. I know I'm about to bring it today. I know I done got some extra pounds here and there, right. but I know my game is in there. And what? It's Labor Cup. So I'm going to bring out my best. And that's what he did. I think I think it was a combination of that. And I, honestly, I, I just think that Fabio just, he wasn't ready. I think he was nervous. Right. And why wouldn't you be? You've got Roger Federer and the doll all up in your ear. Right. And you're just not used to that because you know Fabio crazy anyway. Right. So I just don't think he was ready. And I, and like I said, Jack was like, this old hat for me. I know the Labor Cup. I, right. I, I, am, I am the best Labor Cup player right. on the world team. Right. So anybody scared of you? And, and listeners, sure. just to let you know, I mean, Something that makes this event so unique is you already know tennis is an individual sport. Yep. And maybe you get a little team action when you play doubles or mixed doubles. Right. And then if you're really feeling froggy, <laughs> you may play Fed Cup or Davis Cup. But even at that point, you're only really playing with people from your country. country. Right. Exactly. This is the only team event, mm-hmm. right, where... Well, I shouldn't say that because you technically have world team tennis, but no, don't nobody play world team tennis. Yeah, it's so not, it's not considered like this. I mean, right. like world team the, tennis is not on this level. Not at all. Because mm-hmm. here you're pulling the top players. Yes, for, exactly. You, usually people that play world team tennis, you know, they got out of Wimbledon pretty early. <laughs> right. And they need some extra practice <laughs> before practice they get on the hard courts, right? <laughs> exactly. With the Labor Cup, you really have the top players yes, out there. Yeah. And it... And the way that the the event is structured is on each day, you have three singles matches and you have one doubles match. That's right. Now, from the six people on your team, each person has to play at least one Mm -hmm. singles match. Each doubles match each day has to be a a unique pairing. So it can't be, you know, a repeat matchup. Mm -hmm. And each match that's won on... On, for example, on Friday, they're worth one point. Mm -hmm. On Saturday, they're worth two points. And on uh, Sunday, they're worth three points. Right. And so, this makes watching every single match really vital and important because, let me tell you what, the final score Mm -hmm. this year was Team Europe beat Team World 13 to 11. Yeah. Yeah. You have to at least get 13. And it's like, that was... Close, close, close. I mean, oh my goodness. The, like I said, every every match I watched. Every right. match, which I know you did as well, Bryce. It was yes. so good, y'all. So good. Man. So let's do this, Isaac. Yeah. Let's take turns. Yep. Each one of us, what was your highlight mm-hmm. of the Labor Cup weekend? Mm-hmm. And what was your, oh no, you didn't <laughs> for the weekend. <laughs> okay, I like that. I like that. That's a, that's a good one. Um, I think for me, I, when Jack Sock got out there 
mm-hmm. and got up on Fabio Fognini. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because <laughs> <laughs> what, what nobody expected Jack Sock. Right. Because I even clowned on Jack Sock. And Jack, I am sorry. Because I was like, they, <laughs> they need to keep Jack far away from the singles. Right. I didn't even know about the rule of them having to place a singles match like you mentioned. Right. And, my, and for me, even when I found that out, I was like, okay, Jack's going to take an L, but he'll get it going in the double. So that's all good. Right. It all balances out. He was like, listen, I ain't scared of nobody, Fabio Fognini. I'm about to get up on him. And to me, that to me was really the highlight. And I am so hoping that's going to be a jumping off point me for too. Jack Sock. Me too. Because it just doesn't make any sense that he can play this well in Labor Cup and just can't get his results together for the for the rest of the tour. I mean, the, the guy is just uber, uber talented. And I realized, and he even mentioned, oh, yeah, I had sur- uh, surgery on my thumb, and so I couldn't play. That didn't keep you out the gym, bitch. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you, you could have you could been like Tomas Mooster when he got in that car accident, and he was out on the court. <laughs> in a wheelchair. In a wheelchair, <laughs> doing what? His fitness. You ain't had no excuse. So you need to tighten that up. I'm serious. I had a real moment. I, I don't know if I had gone into the kitchen to get something to eat, and um, I came back. And at a quick glance, <laughs> I saw Jack Sock on there. And in my mind, I thought, whose uncle is that? <laughs> right? I really thought somebody's uncle was out there on the court. Right? And oh, but, man. But, but he pulled but, out that but win. he pulled out that win. And he kept pulling out them Ws. Because Saturday, he won the doubles match. Sunday, he won the doubles match. So Jack was like, look. I, I don't care what shape I'm in. You better know I'm about to bring it for Labor Cup. Right. And that's what he did. So for me, that is my, whoa. Right. Right on Jack Sock. So uh, yeah. my favorite moment yeah. um, was on the third day. Okay. When we had a, we had a few substitutions going on. Mm-hmm. Rafael had Nadal pulled out. Mm-hmm. And, and Nick Kyrgios pulled out. Mm-hmm. And so then we had this matchup of Dominic Team yeah. against Taylor Fritz. <laughs> uh, oh, all I'm going to say Listen. is Taylor Fritz was like, he looked over at John and Patrick McEnroe. They must have looked like Mary Mary because he was like, I'm going to go get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go get, I'm gonna go it, get right it right now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Props to him. That was a huge win Rice. for him. Man. Huge listen. win. Huge, huge. Taylor Fritz was giving them side eye. He was like, <laughs> listen, I, I know we got all this drama going on, but y'all better know I'm about to go out here and I'm about to play. I'm about go, to get this point. Go get it. Go, go get, get it. it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Listen, Taylor was like, I'm scared of you. <laughs> <laughs> Like, ain't nobody scared of you. So I was really Listen. proud for him because by all rights, yes. you know, he was expected to lose that match. Mm-hmm. And he and he really put them in a position to win, Team World to win after that. Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. And so what was the other one? I'm sorry, no, Brian. Oh, one, no, you didn't? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> well, what's my oh, no, you didn't moment? Um, okay, so why are you thinking yeah, out of you, your mind? You could give give uh, yours. That's right. My oh, no, you didn't moment was the very first match. Okay, okay. Shapovalov had two match points oh, yeah. against I mean he had played a great match mm-hmm. and this was once again an opportunity to get Team World off to, off to a, a huge start yes. right yes uh, they had never won a singles match on day, on day one, one. Now, that's right now, well, now Uncle Sock hadn't <laughs> played yet but <laughs> you know until that point they had they not had not that's right and so when he had the two match points and he and you know props to Dominic team yes. for fighting on those points that's right but that was like oh man cuz once it was tied you know how you have that feeling like dude you lost your opportunity mm-hmm. i didn't see team losing after that yeah yeah know? no i i i i have to agree with you yeah so he um, did his whole Roger Federer Wimbledon impression <laughs> right there but um right Oh my goodness! I, I I'm trying to think of what is my oh no you didn't moment. I think I because when wh- who what were the first two matches on day one? So you had that one and then you had which was the Sock other and one? Fonini and then but, but what yeah, was the other Pass one? and uh, Fritz after that on day one on day one. Oh, so and and so funny enough, we were giving props to Fritz. For the victory on day three, I actually am like you. I think that on day one, when he lost his match, 
I felt like he had chances. He yeah. had opportunities. After so he, that gave that a, st- exactly. he gave him that breadstick. He gave that breadstick in the second mm-hmm. set, and then there was the tiebreaker. There was a tiebreaker, and I feel like, because wasn't he up at one point? And then I think he choked out. He just choked out the yeah. rest of the tiebreaker. So that was disappointing. But again, he, he apparently got that fire in his eye. Because he, <laughs> he came he knew, back on day three and was like, mm, Well, he knew two. after that loss to CeCe Pass, he wasn't getting an invite well, back. Was, so right? he, he, this was an opportunity to redeem himself. Listen, right? <laughs> Taylor Fritz was like, okay, I'm going to make up for that day one. I'm about to go out here and what? Get it. <laughs> <laughs> get it. Get it. Get it. <laughs> Well, I'm telling you, so yes, <laughs> for you listeners that that not only may have missed Labor Cup this year or uh-huh. maybe have missed it the two years prior to that, mm-hmm. do not miss it next year. Don't do it. It's going to be back on U.S. soil. Yes. It's going to be in Boston. Yes. And if you can't get there in person, every single match is televised. Yes. Yes, it on is. On the Tennis Channel. That's right. And Watch it. Watch yeah. it. If you can't be there in person like Brothers on Tennis will be, you yes. got to watch it because I'm trying to tell y'all, it is like Bryce said, it is the best tennis event on the calendar. It, it is. By far. It's so good. I just, whoever, like you said, whoever came up with it, they're brilliant. Mm-hmm. Kudos to you because you did it right. And mind you, of course, we, we got to tighten up some of the rules yeah. and all that right. drama that kind of went on because, you know, and, and those who watched kind of kind of may know about it, but unfortunately Rafa had to pull out on day three and that kind of threw off the schedule and World was supposed to have the advantage of selecting the lineups, if you will, on yes. that day. So let's talk yeah. about that for yeah, a second. Yeah, let's go into that. So there is another part of the process here mm-hmm. is that with the lineups, the three singles matches each day and the one doubles match, Yeah. on the first day, they submit their lineups blind. And so right. what that means is each one of the captains say, here's who is playing in my first singles match, my second singles match, my third singles match, and this is my doubles team. Yep. Both coaches do that without knowing what the other coach is doing. They're doing, right. So, right. now, day two, one of the teams, and this year it was Team uh, uh, Europe's mm-hmm. choice, mm-hmm. Uh, what happens is they let Team World put their lineup in, mm-hmm. and then they make the decision of who they want to pair up against Team World on day two. Right. And then it's the reverse on day three. Right. Europe goes first, mm-hmm. and then a Team World decides who they want to pair up against them. Right. And so, Isaac, how did that get turned around on day three? Yeah, so day three, they had the lineup submitted, and Europe submitted Nadal to play singles, but unfortunately, he then had to pull out. So after Team World kind of did their matchup to say who would play against the people on Europe... When the doll pulled out, it threw off the schedule completely because, like Bryce said earlier, you can't have duplicate matchups across right. the three days, so it limits you to what um, pairings you can have play. Mm-hmm. And really, it took away the advantage from the world team because they weren't then able to reestablish their lineup. Once the doll came out and they they did their lineup again. Team World should have had the opportunity to then look at that lineup and then re-pick who they would be playing against. They did not give them that opportunity, and that was not right. And you better know, Patrick and John let them know. Them boys, yeah, they had some, <laughs> they had some fire, which I was very impressed with. <laughs> so that was unfortunate. But again, some growing pains. They right. will learn. But again... Best best event on the tennis calendar by far, and I am so excited to be there next year. I'm uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Friend, it's gonna be popping. <laughs> we're gonna have a busy summer because we're gonna do Cincinnati, we're gonna do a U.S. Open, and we're doing the Labor Cup in Boston. Yeah, and remember, I'm doing the French. That's right, true. you damn yeah, right. We got a lot of tennis on the on the calendar, folks. Yeah, yes, so sir. Stay tuned. Yes, sir. So let's transition from the Labor Cup. Yes. Uh, and let's talk about um, the tournaments that are going on this week. Yes. I would like to do a quick shout out, though, to Naomi Osaka. Oh, okay. For winning the Osaka tournament, yes. the Pan Pacific. That was really cool, the fact that she would enter the ta- the tournament that has her name. And she like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go and take this. So and, that was and, awesome. And let's not stop the accolades there. Yeah. Who did she beat in that tournament? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just... Listen, okay. So, um, on Brothers on Tennis 102, which y'all need to listen to, we were talking about <laughs> the fact that 
Putin Seva ain't scared of Naomi Osaka. Well, Naomi Osaka was fine. Like, you know what? Listen, I'd have had enough of you. I'd have had enough. Brothers on tennis that commented on this. I'm done. And right. she put them things on her. Dude. She was like, I'm going to make you twist your ankle out here. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, but classic Naomi Osaka, when she did train, uh, turn her ankle, she went over very sportsmanlike. I mean, mm-hmm. she is just a very quality young lady. So. She is. So, so kudos to you, Naomi. Great job. Great, uh, great uh, kudos for winning that tournament. Absolutely. All right. Now, this week, there are a couple of Buster tournaments going on, yes. meaning uh, for the men, there are 250-level tournaments, yeah. and for the women, uh, international tournaments. Mm-hmm. But there is one mm-hmm. women's tournament, um, the Dongfang Motor Wuhan mm-hmm. Open. Well, good for you, because I just said Wuhan. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't trying all that stuff. I'm, I'm inspired by the Mary Mary today. Right? I'm, trying, I'm trying to go get it. Go get it. Go get it, Bryce. Go get it. So, yes, um, so this is you know a, a really good tournament in mm-hmm. terms of the draw that it has. Absolutely. The uh, top eight seeds are uh, Ash Barty, mm-hmm. Carolina Pliskova, mm-hmm. Alina Svitolina, yep. Simona Halep, Petra Kvitova, Kiki Burtons, Belinda Bencic. And Shang Wang. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you say it? Uh, sure. No, that's not how you say it. How do you say Wing, it, Isaac? Wang Shang. Wang Shang. Yeah. You're very good with the Asian names. <laughs> I need more practice with that. We're going to work with you. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> I gave it the, the South Side Chicago pronunciation. Right? <laughs> And in addition to those eight, we yes. also have one of the queens yes. who made a guest appearance yes, in, she did. in the first round, Miss <laughs> uh, Venus Williams. Now, Maybe. Isaac, you actually saw some of that match. I didn't see any of it. I did. It was so quick. It was well. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it was a good <laughs> score. Seven six seven. I mean, seven five seven six. Um, you know, Danielle Collins. She, you know, she's my girl. She crazy. Um, it was an up and down match. First mm-hmm. set was up and down, but Danielle took it. And then in the second set, she got up like five love on Venus. And it was like, ooh, this ain't looking good. And then Venus just started scratching her way back and just winning the game here, winning the game there. Got back to five all, and I was getting pretty hyped. I was like, oh, snap, Venus might be doing a comeback. <laughs> they ended up going to the tiebreaker, though, and Danielle did pull it out in the tiebreaker for ah. the second set. So Venus tried to mount that comeback, you know, similar to how Serena was trying to come back on Andre Rescue, <laughs> but neither one of them was successful. <laughs> well, all I know is I saw a bunch of pictures from Venus uh, mm-hmm. in terms of her touring. Okay. Um, was that China? Yeah. That they're at? Yeah. And I think she made a comment on one of her pictures like, in her previous couple of years, she never had been able to do as much uh, sightseeing. Sight well, that's because And there's a reason. I was about to say, right? Because <laughs> you was playing the tournament. You was winning. How about we get back to that, B? <laughs> right. Let's say, let's say the sightseeing for when you retire. <laughs> right? Exactly. But, um, <laughs> so let's talk, let's jump to who yeah. do we see um, making it to the semis and in and, and the finals. All right. Sounds good. So, um, I can go first. Yeah, yeah. Please uh, do. The... The two semifinals I see are mm-hmm. up top. I think it's going to be Barty and Halep. Okay. And then on the bottom, I'm saying Svitolina and Kvitova. Oh, interesting. So I have I have Barty okay. um, up top making the semis. Um, I, for for some reason, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I actually think Sabalenka might get off the get about the because I mean quietly she did give Daniel Collins a bagel in the wrist. That's so really that her game must be kind of kind of right. So I think she might actually try and pull a couple upsets. So she's got to play Kiki Burdens, and then she got she would then potentially play Halep. I'm thinking it might be um, Sabalenka. So I'm gonna call her her and Barty up top, and I think down below I'm gonna pick Svitolina, and actually I'm gonna go with Pliskova. You going with Pliskova? Yeah, because Pliskova just she played Anna Samova, and, and she she kind of she okay. she squared up on it pretty good. So she looks like she's kind of in form. So. I have in the finals Halep and Svitolina. Who do you have? I have, <laughs> that's funny. I have Barty and Pliskova. <laughs> oh, yeah, Barty and Pliskova. So I have Halep winning. And, I, well, at least we're going with the top top half. Okay, I have Barty winning. Okay, yeah, I have Barty winning. And 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 let's um, send out some more um, congratulations here. Yeah, uh, Ash Barty is currently the number one ranked singles. And, and doubles, doubles player in the world. That is incredible. Listeners, you don't get much better than that. I'm trying to tell you. Good on you, Ash Barty. Right. Bring the party. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
since we're talking about the women, yes. let's transition into our hot topic. Let's do that. So let me set it up. Please. We have, so we spent a good portion of this episode talking about the Labor Cup, yes. which is a men's only event. Correct. So we thought, what if we had the women's equivalent? And let's say we name this tournament after mm. hey and 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 in reference to what the U.S. Open did yes. this year, let's honor Miss Althea Gibson. That's right, and we'll call it the Gibson Cup. The Gibson Cup, because why are we brothers on tennis and we gonna represent for the sisters? There you go. There you go. So, if we were to go by today's rankings mm-hmm. as to who would be the first people given an opportunity to be on a team, okay. These are the way that the Team Europe and the Team uh, World rosters could potentially look like. All right. So Team Europe would have Pliskova, Mm -hmm. Svetlina, Mm -hmm. Halep, Mm -hmm. Kvitova, Mm -hmm. Burtons, Mm -hmm. Kanta, and Angelique Kerber as the alternate. That's... (laughs) <laughs> that team is fire. Oh my goodness. Now now hold up. Okay. We have Team World. Uh, okay. What's Who, World going with you? What's World gonna do? I think World gonna show out because <laughs> World you have Ash Barty. Oh, oh that's right. Yeah. Naomi Osaka. Ooh. Bianca Adrescu. Ooh, yeah, that's right. Canada. <laughs> yes. Ser- Serena Williams. Oh my goodness. Belinda Benchich. <laughs> Uh, uh, well, Madison Keys <laughs> <laughs> and Sloan Stevens Ooh. as the alternate. So, okay. so Isaac, Let's how do you think that would play out? Well, uh, okay, yeah, because I see, I forgot world. Yeah, world, <laughs> go ahead. You got some fire. I thought but Europe had fire. No, world, the one got the fire. Listen, you know, I, Bryce, in truth. What we just saw this past weekend, mm-hmm. and I, I'm just going to say it like this, you just never know. Because you, you, you don't know who is going to step up to the plate and right. embrace the, the, the moment and who's going to kind of choke it out a little bit. Right. So I don't. I honestly don't know. You would think that world would, would get it done. Because, I mean, with Bardi, Osaka, Andrescu, Serena, Benchich, and, and, and even Madison. <laughs> right. She would be the only... Kind of iffy one because when you talk about mentally strong, mm-hmm. those are some mentally strong ladies right there. Yes. Marty Osaka, Andrescu, Serena, and Benches. Listen, you ain't, gonna <laughs> get, you, you ain't gonna get much better, right? Um, so I would say World would definitely go into that with the advantage, but again, you just never know. Then they on Europe might be like, Man, am I scared of you? We got our Vaseline too, we got to swing. <laughs> so, <laughs> what about you, Bryce? Well, but so here's my question, yeah. How do you think? Okay, so we know singles. Yes. All right. Mm-hmm. When you look at these players, what do you think about doubles? Though? Well, but see, you you just said it. Ash Barty's the number one double player in the world. <laughs> I mean, you play her with anybody, especially like a Serena. Oh my yeah. goodness, they will clown on 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 them your folks. Right. They will clown, dude. Oh, yeah, but you can only do one though. Right. You can only do one. But so Barty would have to play with somebody. Else. Well, I would assume Andrescu would be a good doubles player. Yeah, right? you would think so. Even though she got all the shots. And we know Bench has just played mixed with the Roger and that's, one that's, Hotman that's, Cup. That's exactly right. So, yeah, that would be my three doubles. Keys right there. with that serve. True. Yeah, uh, she, she, well, when it's on. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, you're exactly right. Yeah, man. I mean, ew. yeah. I mean, but again, Europe, you know, they, they, I think they would still do some things, though. I think they would still have. Because Kiki Burns is a good doubles player. Can, can play some, play some doubles. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, you know, hell, Fed Cup, Kvitova and Pliskova, they, yeah, they, they that's true. it like 19 times. That's so true. They must be doing something right on that squad. So, right. I mean, you just never know, man. I think, oh. Yeah, listen, y'all. We need to get this this uh, Gibson Cup going. Right, <laughs> Cat Adams, are you listening to us? Come on, you Cat. Need, you need to come on and make this happen for us. This would be a big money maker for the WTA. Right, and, and you know what? Something you could even throw it in the same week as Labor Cup. Mm-hmm. Have Absolutely. them alternate days between mm-hmm. men and women, make it a full week event. Mm-hmm. One location. Preach, Bryce. Preach. I'm just trying to say somebody need to come listen. hire me. Brothers on tennis. Hey. Trying to trying to help y'all out, <laughs> <laughs> Bryce. I love that idea. I absolutely love that idea. And, and yeah, I they need to they need to jump on. Right. So, listeners, if you have any thoughts about which team you think would win in the Gibson Cup between Team Europe and Team World, 
Mm-hmm. Go to our website and, and let us know. Uh, we're at www.brothersontennis, and that's B R U T H A S on tennis.com. Go to the contact us uh, drop down menu and send us a message and say, hey, I think it would be Team Europe yeah, or right. I think it would be Team World. Exactly, exactly. We would love to hear from you because, yeah, I, like I said, I'd be interested to see if other folks have a different perspective on this. Right. That's a great question, Bryce. I love it. Right. <laughs> so, um, so with the Labor Cup and uh, the Gibson Cup kind of, mm-hmm. at least from a concept standpoint, wrapping yes. up this week. Uh, we're getting ready to go into the fall season. Yes. Um, we have a couple of uh, Master Series mm-hmm. tournaments coming up, and yeah. we have a couple of uh, uh, Tier 1s coming yeah. up, and we have Fed Cup Finals, mm-hmm. and we have the uh, Davis Cup Finals, and we have the year-end championships for both the men and the women. Yeah. So I know, you know, we're crossing into the later part of the year, but there's some stuff. Some there's, big stuff still to still come. There's a lot of great tennis to be played, folks, especially from a single standpoint. Folks are chasing. They're trying to get into that yes. top eight because they want to be invited to that year-end championship. And you know what I noticed? Yeah. I noticed that uh, this weekend when I was watching the Labor Cup and they were showing the race to the championship, yep. I did not know Serena was in fifth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's there. I so, don't think she's going to play, though. And that's the thing. I really wish that she would. Mm-hmm. But I think even Patrick and some of the commentators have been kind of alluding to the fact that they really don't think that she would play. Because she's not going to play any lead-up tournaments to it. Mm-hmm. So I think, honestly, Serena probably is, is done for the year. Which is disappointing. Because you, you wish that she would go ahead and just play the year in championships and mm-hmm. work some things out a little bit. But right. Basically, the comments I've heard is that, yeah, she's pretty much shut it down for the year. I look. If I was our coach, I'd make a play every week to win a tournament. <laughs> exactly. You know? I mean, get the monkey off your back. And right. you and I have talked about this. I think that goes a lot into what what's you know kind of been the issue of her not being able to get these grand slams. Mm-hmm. She hasn't won. She hasn't won as a mother. And right. I think that once she can kind of get that off of her back, I think that will be one less pressure point that she'll have Mm -hmm. in regards to getting 24 and then possibly 25 and beyond. Right. Yeah, I mean, go to the Thailand Open or something. (laughs) Right. (laughs) (laughs) Raise up on them. Right, raise up that trophy, you know. Remember what victory feels like. Exactly, bro. So, (laughs) well, look, listeners, we're going to go ahead and wrap this episode up. Uh, We had, once again, we are huge fans of the Labor Cup, and if you haven't been supporting that event... Definitely get on board for next year. That's right. And hey, meet us in Boston. That's right. Come <laughs> come check us out because I'm trying to tell y'all we will be in the house. Exactly. In the house. <laughs> exactly. So wishing you all a great week. Um, signing off with Brothers on Tennis. This is your boy Bryce. And this is your boy Isaac. And you have a good one. Talk to you soon.